Masai Mara, as you, as you have read it in the papers or in the news, is, uh, has got the seventh water of the world, yeah? You go there, there is still plenty of animals to see. The moment you encroach to an animal, a single animal, nine, ten cars coming all of a sudden, it's very sad. My best, uh, my best brother, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call me Madoadoa, all spotted. And they gave me the name because they used to say I drive as fast like a cheetah. Tell me the name of that park. Mm. Ohulu. Park. Ohulu Park. Ohulu Park. Ah. <laughs> as you get into the parking, you see just you're getting down into a bush. They, 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 they can't believe this is the place they were going to. It's like getting into a bush and all of a sudden you are somewhere special. Sayo kijaribu kuangalia mara kama vile hoteli ile iko mara. Wafanye kazi ya hizo mahoteli ni watu wengi sana. They were so much annoyed that they blocked the whole lot. No tourists went to Nairobi and no tourists went to Masai Mara until late in the evening. Wamepigua simu, akakuta ndofu hapa. Na ndio hii mama umeuliwa, akakataa kuwa ndofu. Kwa nini? A client who comes to Kenya without seeing Mara, he, he never did a safari. We thought we have seen them all, but then you go to the next hill and there are more, and the next hill and there are more. I, I got them the sunset with the tree. They were really happy. They wanted me to stay there until the sun goes down. Good morning. Uh, these are lunch boxes. We, it's now 6:30. We have to leave early, and we don't have time for lunch, so that's why we carry lunch boxes because we have to go down to the river, and we have to drive back to Nairobi. Well, our, our main priority is uh, to see the lions and uh, also to go to the river to see the immigration. But the main prospect is the immigration. Masai Mara, as you, as you have read it in the papers or in the news, is, uh, has got the seventh water of the world. Yeah? It's nowhere else in the world. You find immigration of animals every year from one country to the other or from one part to the other in a, in a, in a, in a natural way. So again also, even when they are not, not, the, not only the immigration, even when you have other, other times, you go there, there is still plenty of animals to see. Some clients, they don't want to spend like four or five hours in the bush looking for animals. They just want two hours, they see whatever they can see, and they go back and relax. But there are others who want to see everything regardless of what time you're going to take.
And these animals are not in one enclosed place. So you find like uh, you have to drive for miles to see a cheetah. You have to drive for miles to see the hippos. So it is, it is for you now because you know what your clients really want. Ah, uh, visual to visual for the sadliba. Sadliba. What the apple? Hey, hey. Abu Abu Goja. Ni marisa izi izi le mai kubwa kubwa. Ari le kari kosi dio. Aya ni soko kwa ida miti ya balun. Kamla si jafika miti ya balun. Kuri ama kushoto. Ni ndani ya kushoto. Ni ndani ya watoto. Wala watoto ine. As directed by his friend, Madoa Doa manages to cite a cheetah. The cheetah is relaxing in the shade with her four young cubs. Madoa Doa's clients have the chance to take many photographs. occasions it is you who motivates the client. It's not just telling the clients that's an elephant, that's a lion. Yeah, they know, they have seen them on the TV. They have seen they have seen all the books. And he knows that's an elephant. It has six sets of teeth. Each set of teeth gets worn out after every ten years. It doesn't eat the way we eat. It glides the food between the teeth. So that's why the teeth get worn out. So by, by the, the time the last set of teeth is finished, it's 60, and then it can't be able to eat the kind of food it was eating before. So it gets malnourished. Its body gets weak. And then finally, it has to die. Let him know even what he doesn't know about the elephants. By telling him so, even when you want to leave, they want to take a, a much more video or more pictures because they didn't know all those knowledges about the elephant that you're talking. They will wait for the lions to, to move out yeah. and then they go in and they finish everything. Uh, they are very good in eating, yeah. uh, skinning the bone. Yeah, yeah. There are two kinds. Yeah, there are two kinds. Uh, this, this two These kinds. ones are voscious. Yeah, that one? The other one is Malabo. Malabo stock. Marabu also stock. eat meat? Also eat meat. Uh -huh. But his beak is not uh, good in tearing meat like uh -huh. the vosha. Uh -huh. So he waits for the vosha to tear and then he steals from them. <laughs> So now we head for the river. These are the balloon guys. They follow the balloon where it lads, they unpack the whole thing.
I'm Stuart and this is Sarah. We just went up in a hot air balloon over Masai Mara and now we're here having a bush breakfast. It was a bit like flying really, if I can imagine, soaring across the savannah. Very good, very peaceful. We saw a few animals, didn't we? Saw some animals, yeah. Hippo, buffalo, um, zebras. Actually, we saw quite a lot. Hmm. Do you know when ballooning started? The history of ballooning? No. no. Uh, ballooning started, and it fills me, as an Englishman, fills me with deep joy in that ballooning started in France. <laughs> My name's Mike Jennings, uh, hot air balloon pilot. Uh, I've been a professional freelance balloon pilot for 12 years in total, flying all over the world. Uh, in the Masai Mara, I've been flying here for about six years. It's, it's so difficult to classify or, or to put into a bracket the type of people that, we, that come along and fly in the balloons. It's, it's all sorts, it's everybody. It's everybody from all walks of life. You have the, the people, top end of society, you know, the people who are scrimp and save and flying as a life's ambition. It's very rewarding in that respect. People want to do it as a you know, once in a lifetime. This is what I've always wanted to do, fly in a balloon over the Masai Mara. And, and you know, rarely, rarely, I would say, in, in all my years' experience, have I ever encountered people where it's fallen short. Um, you know, and I love that enthusiasm. I'm a family man. I have a family. I have a wife and three boys. Or oh, if I may say, three lions. And those three lions, they are, they are big lions, because uh, the first one is on his own, the second one has finished high school, now he's in college, and the third one is doing class eight. So Steve is a, a family man, and they are always there for them when they need me. He, when I'm on safari, they understand I'm not allowed, so they, whatever is to be handled, they handle with their mother. She has, she's got to understand the nature of my job, so that also motivates me a lot, because she supports me where I need it. Yeah, and we try and make life go on. Uh, on behalf of our, our community at Second Any Camp, um, I would like to give you a very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you for choosing this car and your survival tomorrow. In the evening, which is a great time that we intermingle, we, we exchange ideas uh, uh, with our guests, and we have a campfire as well, we see. This season has picked up very well because we are having more clients than uh, what we expected. In fact, we had to change some of our clients, we had to move them into another camp because of being overbooked and all that. It's a very good season, and I hope it's going to continue like that. And in the evening, for dinner, 7.30 to 9.30. As the Maasai Mara gains more popularity every year, more and more camps have been set up. An exponential growth in the number of camps has been recorded in the past few years. As you have seen, just across this river, down, going down this way, up to Mara, Mara Sopa, lots of camps are coming up, coming up. Every other day, every morning, camps are coming up. That one is also another. It's not a good idea because the more camps we have, the more pollution we shall have, the more 
environmental friendly we are not going to be. They are coming up so much, but it's growing because everybody is getting greedy, wants to earn this money. And the people who come down here, they tell you, do you have a portion of land and uh, can I put a camp here? Just because of the money, coming comes up. And you know now what that means? More people coming in. Well, people are not bad coming in, but at least there should be a control. There should be a control. The increase in camps has led to crowding in the park. The impact of this crowding has been enormous, and no one feels the pressure more than the animals that feel literally crowded in. This is now uh, an issue of the driver, because there is a limit that you're supposed to go near the animals. You're not supposed to go that close to the animals, because those are animals and they get irritated when you're so near to them. You live, even find some screaming. If it's a lion sleeping, they want to scream to wake it up so they can take a photo. But that's a long thing to do. You should not even disturb the animal. You should wait for him to wake up at his own pace. You understand? So it's long. The moment you encroach to an animal, a single animal, nine, ten cars coming all of a sudden, it's only because the guide doesn't advise them professionally. It's very sad that some of them are so unprofessional because they should kindly and get into a polite way of advising the guest how and why such things should not happen. More and more tourists flock the Masai Mara Game Reserve, and with minimal park security, many flaunt park rules to the point of crowding and disturbing the wildlife. Whenever you go down to the Mara River and they are having their lunch down there, you'll always see them, some of them they even don't bother, they throw the they throw the, 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 the picnic line, the, the remains of the picnic line boxes to the mangoes and all that. They scatter all over. Okay, some of them throw them down to the Mara River, polluting the whole thing and about it. You still have some tourists who are hardcores. You tell them, don't throw this, and you still find them doing it. But also we have some drivers who don't actually follow the rules because on the light manner, if I saw someone throwing takataka out of the car, I'm supposed to stop the car and ask him or her to go and collect it. So that alone, by asking that client to go and pick it up, they, they, feel, they feel the guiltiness. So it will not happen again. Alex has decided to be different. He makes sure that the second Nani camp is the most environmentally friendly camp in the Mara. We do our garbage sorting here. As you can see, we have some bottles, some uh, the bulbs, which we recycle, uh, which we pack them and take them back to Nairobi for our owners. These are plastic bottles, water bottles, which we also pack them and take them back to Nairobi for recycling. Down here we have this sawdust, which we mix with the boxes and all those cartons. We come here and compress them where they, when they are moist with water to make up this uh, charcoal from leaves and uh, boxes. He also maintains a vegetable garden so that the guests can have fresh vegetables in their meals. And here you can get to see we have some carrots coming up. They are very fresh from our garden, uh, organic uh, garden. Oh, well, some hotels have, uh, have uh, learned how to be environmental friendly. They're planting natural trees and all that. They are, they are learning our way, Siginani, now. I hope everybody goes our way and we shall be very happy. The great attraction this time of year is the great wildebeest migration. 
millions upon millions of wildebeest trek for hundreds of miles from the Serengeti to the Maasai Mara for food and breeding. have the closing of wild beasts, if you don't have time and you're just there for let's say like one hour, you'll stay there for one hour but within the next two hours the wild beasts will start closing but you'll not be there. Yet you went all the way to see those those closings, you know. Today, this herd of wildebeest was lucky enough not to encounter a predator at the river. They live another day. No, no, no. They have just come from yeah, They have just come from Tanzania to Masai Mara. How long will they stay? They will stay here uh, for the last three months. Uh, until late September, and then they go back after finishing all the grass. Yeah. By the time they go back, there will be no grass here. Everything, yes, everything will be gone. In, in three months, nothing. Only the ground. Yeah. Yeah, they only come here for three months. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Ewasonyiro, where a woman was killed by an elephant and a blockade erected, the people are still unhappy. Yeah. What has been done so far? We, we were fact, here when the problem was there. Yeah. Do you think they're going to do something no, to help No, the no, no, no. Because, in fact, we try to see Kuna wenya meuliwa there before. Hui mwenye ameuliwa jana. In fact, I wajia provide anything so far. So, hata hii, bado tu anadanganyana. Kila mesi ya mdofu na uwa watu tiyo. Njero, njero. Kila mesi, sisi nalia. Sisi, hakuna kitu na saidea sisi. Ndofu wa wesi uuluwa, watu yetu na malisa. Sasa kama uwe na saidea sisi, toa ndofu kwetu. Toa ndofu na malisa watu yetu. Human and animal conflict has always been there and I think it will always be there. It is very important for the, the, the people taking care of the animals. If it's Narok County Council, the rangers, they should educate the people how to handle the animals. And if there is some stray animals that have gone to the people's farms, they should take action immediately. We've been known not to kill animal, wild animals because we don't feed on them, we don't need uh, their trophies and all that, we don't need anything from them. But the problem is whenever they come into a homestead, that's where the problem starts. Because an elephant, uh, an elephant can stumble on somebody like that, like the way it did, and a lion can strike again the, the cow. Leopards have been known to end a goat span and get a some few killing a lot of uh, killing a lot of goats in at a rope. But the compensation is what the people are crying for. We hope that a solution to this challenge will be found soon. But for now, Madoadoa has to deliver his clients to the airport. Yeah. One 
My best, uh, my best black brother, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's coming back tomorrow. Oh, he's coming. Yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Big man, yeah. yeah. Cool man. Safiri Salama. After the safari, if your clients are happy, you are also happy. And you're proud of your job. And I like you so, they were very happy. Everybody wanted to give something because they were really happy and they were sad that they were leaving, you see? And so it, is, it, it really motivates you in your job. Tomorrow morning at 3 a.m., I'm supposed to pick up some clients here, starting another safari for four days. That is Nakuru and Masai Mara, because this is a high season and we expect a lot of jobs. So no resting. Madoa Doa, Alex, and Rombas do not just do a job. This is a calling to be a bridge between the stressful hustle and bustle of the world's cities and the healing escape and tranquility of raw nature. Whenever a guest comes here, they feel exhausted before, but after living here, they come out very happy. It's like a mental healing. kuisi si kama samani atupikani na wanyama kila mnyama yote ambayo iko huko ni wanyama ambao wako na uhuru huko ikiwa huko kwetu sasa tunaishi hivyo na tumejua kwa na maana maana ambayo anatuletea faida i love animals i love birds i love environment and through experience and uh, through my interactions with tourists and for the love I have for the animals and for the people and the natural environment, I think that has molded me so much such that I always feel like I'm at home. <laughs> 